go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to CS 161, uh, Design and Analysis of Algorithms. The class, we're going to ask lots of questions, answer lots of questions. Uh, let's start with the biggest question. What do you think there? Uh, and I don't mean this, you know, existentially, philosophically. I mean it very literally. Uh, you know, why are you here in this room uh, instead of being in a different class, uh, or better yet, sleeping in? And uh, you know, I harbor no delusions uh, about this question. You're here because you got to be here. But uh, you know, that's my second question, which is. You know, the Stanford CS faculty, we know there's zillions of interesting courses you could take here. Uh, we know your time here is finite. You can only be able to take a certain number of classes. So what is it about 161 that makes it so important that we think it's key that you've got to take this one? Why is this required? Okay. So let me start out the class to the answers to that question. So why is it required? And... Uh, so I claim uh, serves the following purposes. So first of all, I would really, and many people would argue this, that algorithms is really kind of the heart of the discipline. It's really the beating heart of computer science. So let me write fundamental to CS. And to back this claim, let me just write down a few of the other classes uh, from the CS major that we're going to see direct points of contact at some point uh, during this class. Okay, so not stuff that just somewhere down the line you'll see some connection eventually. Literally, there'll be a lecture this quarter where we'll explicitly address some issue in one of these other courses. And I'm, I'm only listing a sampling. I'm not even going to bother to list any other theory courses. Obviously, 161 is key for all the other theory courses. I'm just going to list some theory ones. So, uh, operating systems, 140. Uh, networking, and we'll talk about connections to networking today, and as well as later. Uh, machine learning, that'll come up when we discuss clustering. Uh, cryptography, CS255. Computational genomics is another point of contact, which I'll highlight in this very lecture today, and we'll also revisit it later in the quarter. And uh, another thing that's interesting is algorithms is, are increasingly becoming important not just for computer science, but for lots of other disciplines. So let me just write for now also for the natural sciences. You know, we'll see that with the applications to biology today, but there are others. Uh, and even the social sciences. So for example, my own research is actually on the interface of algorithms economics, now maybe you'd say, you know, what, what possibly could there be on uh, the interface and algor algorithms in economics, but just to give a sort of obvious example, as you all know, whenever you type in a search to a, a, a search engine like Google or Yahoo, you return not just the organic search results, links to which that the search engine deems relevant but for your query, but there's also various sponsored links or advertisers' links. And maybe someday you wondered exactly how do they figure out which advertisers' links get shown on that real estate of the search results page, and also how does the pricing work? How do they get billed for that? And in fact, those are all done by auctions. So there's your connection to economics. In fact, the main revenue generation for all of these search engines is done uh, using auctions real time. So you need the economics to understand the, the workings of the auction, and of course you need algorithms to get those to work for millions of queries happening all the time in real time. Okay, and there's many, many other connections as well. Okay. So second of all, I claim that the material we're going to cover is going to be useful to all, or certainly almost all of you, after graduation. Or even before. 
Now, of course, will every single lecture be useful to every single one of you? No. But, you know, I make this statement that with full knowledge, you know, mindful of the fact there's a very di group, diverse group of people, different majors, different interests, you'll take on lots of different professions. Despite that diversity, I claim all of you will be able to look back at some point in the future and say, oh, wow, I'm really glad I learned this concept or this tool uh, from CS161. And again, to convince you that this, I'm not just blowing hot air here, so those of you who are CS majors will discover after you graduate, at some point the department's going to send you a survey, a questionnaire, and they'll ask you, among other things, you know, looking back of the courses, CS courses you took at Stanford, which have been the most useful, which are the ones you're most glad that you took, and 161 really ranks in the top two classes in those surveys. Okay, so that's really uh, opinion sort of robustly shared by the alumni. For those of you seeking perhaps a little bit more instant gratification, you know, I should tell you that every time I teach this class, and this is, the, this is the seventh time now, and every single year, you know, at some point, maybe midway, maybe kind of deep into the quarter, I get students with these just ridiculous ear ear grins on their faces coming up to me, and they say, Professor, thank you. I just came from my technical interview with insert hot company X here. And I rocked every single question because the answers to all of them were in your lectures. Okay, so for those of you who sort of want a more instant payoff, you know, hopefully some of you will get it in that form. Okay, but that's not. But I have to say, it's not. You know, I'm, I'm, there's a side effect. Uh, but I'm thinking longer term than just your technical interviews for this quarter. Okay. All right. Now the third reason. I have to, uh, you know, many of you perhaps will not agree with me on this point, even even at the end. Of the quarter, but I feel like part of my duty as your 161 instructor is to be a sort of uh, algorith algorithmic event. And I'm going to try to show you kind of the, uh, um, you know, sort of the beauty in the field. And I hope at least maybe say 10% of you will agree with me by the end of the quarter that actually thinking hard and reasoning about algorithms can be a lot of fun. Okay, so it's, an un it's a sort of unique blend of creativity on the one hand and precision on the other, which is sort of endlessly exasperating, but also kind of, uh, for some of us, endlessly fascinating. Okay? So now I owe you a word from Stanford's lawyers, believe it or not. So we're doing something, so this is not an SCP class, so it's not on television. Uh, videos are not going to be <coughs> up promptly on the regular SCBT, SCP site. However, we are videotaping it for posterity. You'll notice the cameras in the back. You'll notice I'm wearing a microphone even though there's no speakers and so on. Um, and so uh, as a result, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm compelled to warn you that if you walk in front of the camera, so these, these lectures may be posted on the web at some point in the future, not just in the Stanford site, but uh, for everybody around the world. So if you walk in front of the camera, um, your image may be shown on the web. If you speak up in class, that voice may, may show up on the web. Um, so if you come late, please dress well. <laughs> uh, but so that said, uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, we're not, we're not going to be excluding anybody. So if you're not comfortable with those facts, that's fine. You can, of course, fully participate in the class, uh, you know, without having your image or voice on the web. Just be sure you sit outside of the camera range. So that, my understanding, is the sides of the room and the back of the room. Is that correct? So yeah, so just don't sit in perhaps front and center. Uh, and then, of course, if you don't want to ask questions in class, I'm obviously always available uh, after class, in office hours, and by appointment. Okay, so if you're not comfortable with that, uh, you know, we'll of course make every effort to, that it doesn't uh, impact your enjoyment of the class at all. Okay, all right, so disclaimer over.